What is going on here? Everybody, welcome back. I'm Yumble, and today I want to talk about managing connections in city skylines. More specifically, I want to talk about smaller interchanges or service interchanges. As far as what's happening here, I would call this a rural highway junction. So the, the context here, and context is everything when it comes to road connections. The context is a smaller local road connected with a more major highway route. Now everything is at grade, meaning the vehicles have to cross each other on the same plane. So there's a high chance of collision. There's a definite chance of slowing down as the minor road has to yield. This also means that the, the major road is definitely not free flowing. They are, uh, <laughs> they are often slowing down to turn. They're often slowing down to avoid vehicles crossing. This is extremely dangerous, but I have to say it's working. Traffic isn't backing up. Everyone's making it through. For all its flaws, it's doing exactly what is intended at this moment. And it's broken. Our inexpensive rural intersection has now failed due to traffic demands on all sides. It's completely backed up. Nobody can get through. Not safely, at least. Nobody's happy. <laughs> when uh, cities first observed this phenomenon, they had to figure out a way to separate the traffic. So the goal now is to get this through traffic separated from the local traffic that's trying to cross. This introduced the concept of grade separation, where now we're actually going to travel into the third dimension. We're going to elevate this crossroad, and we still have to figure out a way for it to connect to the highway. This traffic is still going to want to enter and exit the highway. This is the heart of the concept of a service interchange. As I said earlier, context is everything. A service interchange is designed for going from a small road to a larger road while allowing the larger road to be a freeway and have free-flowing traffic separate from the crossing traffic going over or under it. Let me show you what a simple service interchange might look like. What we have here is a standard diamond interchange, not to be confused with the diverging diamond. We'll get to that later, but this is a standard diamond interchange, also known as a typical rural interchange. So we've upgraded. Now we have grade separation between these uh, two traffic flows. So the free flowing through traffic can get in and out with no problem. We've also moved all of the conflict to these two intersections. So there are still left turns that conflict with through traffic on the local road, but we've moved them all into these positions. Uh, now I wanna show you how to set this up in Traffic Manager so that it actually works. All things considered, it's actually handling traffic quite well, considering there's no Traffic Manager or laws in place at, this, at the uh, intersections. But I'd like to show you how to set that up properly just to avoid all this awkwardness that's going on right now. Um, the thing is, is actually quite to scale, I would say, too. You could, you could make a smaller one, but I would say this is similar to how they appear in the real world. And if you're looking to make good-looking cities, I would strongly recommend keeping your intersections realistic in size. So the, the go-to here is lane connectors. We're going to open up Traffic Manager, go to lane connectors, and I'm going to show you on this one junction, it's the same for both as they are symmetrical. But let's start with the left turns coming off the highway. We're going to do all three lanes are available for left turning traffic. I'm going to pause it. That was weird. But all three lanes are available to left turning traffic. Right turning traffic can stay to the right lane, I suppose. Left turning traffic going onto the highway can keep to the closest lane. The through traffic going over the overpass can just cross into this. I like that a lot. 
Now let's do something interesting here. I suppose we'll do a right turn that's shared with straight through traffic. I like that for this situation. This is a common service interchange move. If you want to add a turning pocket, feel free. Get a different road from the workshop and go crazy. Uh, but for us, I think that'll work fine today. So this is through traffic as well. This one is left turning traffic because this lane will come out the other side. We're going to have them keep to their lane in the middle to avoid errors. They're going to come out the other side and they're going to have to turn left because this junction works the same as this one symmetrically. One thing that I would do additionally for realism, though it is a bit silly in city skylines, people make mistakes or so I've heard. So I've been told I'm going to use this right lane to double as a straight through option for vehicles that mistakenly took this ramp. I don't really like that in city skylines, but I know someone's going to mention it if I don't do it. Uh, people often like to have a, have a get out of jail free card if they accidentally take the wrong exit. And this interchange can allow for through traffic to get back on the highway if they've made an error. So some people might make mistakes. I don't know about that, but this, <laughs> this is what it would look like in real life. If you find a lot of through traffic using that lane in city skylines, it's actually terrible. So I'm going to take it away for now, but I figured I'd, I'd talk about it at the very least. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side and we'll, we'll see where we're at. Things are looking good, but there's still a ton of conflict at these, at these intersections that really need some traffic management. In this case, a signalized junction is in order. So we're going to grab our timed traffic light tool as the yields are not doing it. The, <laughs> I've got yields at these spots right now and they're not very good, but select both of these with your timed traffic light tool because we want this to all work as a single junction so that it's all timed together and synchronized. I'm going to hit set up timed traffic light, add step. Let's pause the simulation because things are about to get messy. Uh, starting with the configuration, I'll just do everything on, on one side first. The other side will be identical, though upside down. So let's assume that this direction is north, this is south, east is over here, west is over here, and I'll keep it oriented this way for the, for the time being. Let's, let's hit change mode to break out these lights. I want to have independent right and left hand turns. So hit this one once for an independent right turn. Hit this one once for an independent left turn. That's awesome. Very, very good. Let's address our straight through traffic as that's probably the most aggressive uh, <laughs> direction that we have. So let's do that first. Straight through. We'll allow them in and out at the same time. While that's all going on, right turning traffic can do their thing. And this right turning traffic is always free flowing because of the way the lane connectors were just set up. So that's totally fine. They can make that right as well. On this side, it should look identical though backwards. Straight through, straight through. Allow the right turn, allow the right turn. Very good. Timing wise, Let's do a minimum time of 10 seconds, maybe a max time of 25 or so. After minimum time has elapsed, the, tr the light will change if there's more waiting than driving, as determined by the flow sensitivity, which I'm gonna put to 0.3 as a starting point. So that is the beginning, that is the first phase of our light. I'm gonna hit add to establish that. Let's hit add, add step and we'll do the, the second phase now. I'm gonna leave the timing the same and the flow sensitivity the same for this. Those may change later, but right now let's just get the directionality right. The next thing we wanna do is allow left turns to enter the highway to clear out this left turning bay that just, that just filled up probably. Straight through traffic can continue doing their thing, but because of that left turn, this through traffic must stop so they'll be the straight throughs will stop here. Right turning traffic can continue going if it's available. That's I'm okay with that. And this left turning traffic will remain stopped because that'll be the third and final phase. Same thing over here. Lefts enter the highway. Straight throughs must stop. That right turn can continue doing its thing. And all the while, this, straight, this uh, set of straight lanes can go straight through conflict free as they don't conflict with this right turn. I'm gonna hit add, leave the timings the same. Our third and final step will be left turns coming off the highway. So allow the left turn to come off the highway, stop the straight and left turning traffic 
going east. And this left turn can continue doing its thing because I'm I'm no hater. No hater aid from me. We'll be fine. Left turns coming off the highway for this side means that this traffic must stop. That right turn can continue. Add. That should be good. Let's uh, let's observe how that looks in its current configuration. So I've been watching this operate for a while, and the one trend that I've noticed, the one negative trend, is that left turning traffic trying to go south on the highway from our original orientation here, that southbound traffic coming from the east is consistently backed up. <laughs> so there are a few ways we can overcome this. I would say that this interchange is really good in most spots until something like this happens. Then accommodations must be made. There's a few different options. One fine option might be to add an extra turn lane. I don't have a problem with that, so I think I have a road in here. Well, let's see. I'm just looking to add a single lane, so a 3 plus 4. Do I have a 3 plus 4? Do I have a 3 plus 4? 3 plus 5. Do we have a 3 plus 4? Hey, we do! 7 lane asymmetrical road. So what I'd like to do here is elevate, uh, change that elevated road so that this direction has two turn lanes coming off it. I might extend this into, into this. I might make the eight lane road happen here so that left turning traffic has a little more space to back up. But I'm curious to see what this does. Now this is not our only option by any means. This is not the only solution, but it is an interesting one. And I'm not sure exactly what will happen. I mean, all I'm trying to do is, is double the capacity, the holding capacity of this bridge, and I think we'll succeed there. As far as exactly what will happen as a result of that, it's anyone's guess. But either way, it should be very fun. <laughs> I've let things run for another 10 or 15 minutes in real time, and it's actually working great. That second turn lane has worked wonders. I will say they, they do favor the, the middle left lane but overall, it's doing what it's supposed to. It just doubles the capacity of this uh, of this overpass. So twice as many cars can be queued up, ready to make that left turn when the light changes. Here is what's happened at this intersection. I chose to... I did something a little different. So the left lane is dedicated to the left lane here. And the center lane, as you enter the interchange, splits. So the right lane is still the right lane. The center lane splits. So they still have a straight through option. If this lane wants to split to go straight through, they totally can. But really, that's just to, to ease all of the congestion that was happening on the left lane. Splitting at the left lane did not do us any favors, so the center lane was the way to go. But yeah, this is, this is sustainable. I'm gonna see if I can get a little more traffic into this so we have to figure out an alternate solution. Let's take things to the next level. This is the diverging diamond. I think this is a good next option or upgrade when you're looking at the diamond because it uses all of the same ramps and overpasses if you want, but it uses a reversed road. You'll notice that these are backwards. I have a, a good video that describes exactly how to build this, but really all I did was upgraded this road to the reverse six lane version. I gave an extra turn lane on the, the outbound traffic from the highway just because it kind of made sense here. Like the two left turn lanes work congruently with the two through lanes on the uh, on the overpass here. But yeah, I think that's a good kind of intermediate option to add a lot more throughput, provided that most of your traffic is interfacing with the highway. So I don't think the diverging diamond is a catch-all for, for any and all situation. If you have a lot of through traffic, let's say traffic is trying to use this local road to get to the other side of the local road and they want to use this ramp. This is actually pretty inhibitive to them. Pr inhibitive? Prohibitive? It's not good for them. That cross traffic is not having as good of a time because they do have to wait for the entering, the exiting and entering traffic. So it, it just kind of gets them hung up a little bit. But if you have a lot of traffic that wants to get on and off the highway, like if you look at the vehicles that are in the left lane here that want to get on the highway, they have a very easy time. They only pass through one light and then they get onto the highway for free. So that's very nice. It's also decent for left turning traffic coming off the highway, though they do have to kind of queue up on this overpass if you want to have this a as a two-phase light. 
but yeah, I do endorse the diverging diamond. I don't think it's a catch all. Keep in mind, once again, it's not good for crossing traffic, but it is good for traffic that wants to interface with the highway. So if the majority of your cars want to get on and off the highway, it's a great option. Here is what the lane setup, the lane configuration looks like. And the light configuration is a little bit different from the previous one. I do have a video that goes in depth on this light configuration. Hopefully I'll have the foresight to put that up in the corner for you. But it's a it's a two phase light. Left turning traffic just queues up on the bridge. Uh, right turning traffic is always free to go. And through traffic gets across in two phases. Yeah. There is an alternative though. There is another. This is not the only upgrade that you can do to a diamond interchange to reinvigorate it once your diamond has run out of steam. There's something else you can do and it's for a more urban situation. What do you think it is? Take a look at the single point urban interchange. It's a good one. It's a good one. I like this a lot. In city skylines, I think they tend to run a bit large compared to how wide they might be in real life. Because the whole point of this is that it brings all of the traffic to a single point at the center where you can use the same bridge from your diamond interchange. So your developing city can use its diamond inter infrastructure again uh, to get a little more throughput out of it but it's supposed to not take up very much space. That's kind of the goal. All of these designs are a battle between space taken up and traffic flow. Generally larger is better for traffic flow, but with diminishing returns. And of course you wanna save plenty of space for your city. So I don't recommend overusing large interchanges, but this one specifically is meant to fit within a small area. There's a great picture on the Wikipedia page that shows a more compact version of it, but the nature of city skylines means it's a bit wider than usual. This center point is where all of the conflict lives, as I mentioned a moment ago. You'll see here, these are all free flowing, the ends, the middles. It's just in the dead center where traffic is crossing over itself. So this has the advantage of the diverging diamond that left turns can occur at the same time coming from the highway. Uh, left turns can get on the highway at the same time, which is good too. And it has the advantage of the diamond that through traffic can have its own phase. Let me show you what that means for the light setup. Set up time to traffic light, add step. Um, the timing I'm not really sure of. We'll just, we'll just make it up 10. 10 to 25 worked well before, so I'll do that again. This is gonna be a three phase light, so three cycles. In real life, you can do it a little differently, but because the game reads this as, as straight roads, it does not acknowledge the existence of this left turn because it's not sharp enough. What you can do here is say, one side gets to go, all other sides must stop. So that'll be phase one. The other side gets to go, all other sides must stop. And then add another step. The lefts from the highway now get to go simultaneously. Add step, start. So let's see how this runs. I'd love to see a little more traffic build up. This thing, it has very high capacity. I honestly endorse this more so than the diverging diamond. I think the diverging diamond is great. It's almost a little too easy is the thing. This one is somewhat more something. I don't know if elegance the word, but the, the single point urban interchange just has a leg up on through traffic. 
So it's all situational. If you have too much through traffic crossing the highway, a single point urban interchange will pretty much always win. So keep that in mind. Diamond is also still viable at this at that point. The other thing with this is that is it is a three phase light. I think I also did the diamond as three phases. So that's worth looking into. Um, I think the main draw to this one is that traffic entering the highway and exiting the highway can make lefts at the same time. That's really what where the difference lies between this one and the regular diamond. The spooey is the single point urban interchange is actually a diamond variant, according to my sources. I'm going to hit the party button. I call this the party button. I've been calling it that for years, but really it's allow traffic to enter blocked junction. I'm going to do that on all sides. Like everybody just enter the blocked junction. Right now we're seeing a lot of sluggishness at these intersections, and I really want to see traffic just pouring through. The highways automatically have this toggled on. That's why their intersections are so flowish. Flowish? Can you tell I'm losing my mind? I've seen a lot of interchanges today. This is more work than I usually do in a given afternoon, but it's a lot of fun. All right, three speed for a little bit. So there's one phase. There's the second phase. And then there's the traffic coming off the highway. And then this will run again. So that's it. That's the complete, that's the whole kit and caboodle as it stands. Um, you can change the lane math on this, of course, like a four plus two is advantageous if you want to have two lanes of traffic turning to the highway or two lanes of traffic coming off the highway. A lot of node controller might be necessary to get the lanes to, to miss one another, but that's okay. It's all, it's all quite doable. But yeah. Single point urban interchange intersection marking tool also benefits this massively throw in some markings with intersection marking tool. And it's a very good thing. Uh, you can make it a bit smaller than this too. I have a couple examples in the workshop. One of them is very squared off and quite a bit smaller. So I would recommend that. Uh, I'll try to link my interchanges in the description as well. So you can just download these from Steam if you feel so inclined. In the near future, I think I'd like to do another video about system interchanges. Of course, today's video was about service interchanges for getting cars on and off the highway and creating a a bridge, you know, using grade separation, that type of thing. But in the future, I'd like to do larger interchanges designed for connecting highway systems together. So that should be interesting. There's also more to be said about service interchanges as we haven't done any of the variants with loops. So you can always add a loop to a service interchange if you want to make kind of a partial cloverleaf, but that's another story for another day. Everyone, I really appreciate your presence here. Feel free to subscribe to the channel. Uh, that's all I've got for today. Everyone, thanks for hanging out. I've been Yumble. I'll see you in the next stream or the next video.